Hello, I would like to go over another capacitors in series and parallel problem. And for this, I would like to go over um, basically a problem that I've posed in my lecture notes where there are multiple capacitors, some that are in parallel to each other and some that are in series with each other. And uh, we're supposed to calculate several things. Okay, so first of all, um, what we want to do is we want to first calculate the equivalent or the total capacitance of the combination above. Okay, so it looks like C1 and C2 are innermost. That's because they're next to each other, they're in parallel. You could not say that any, either C1 or C2 individually was in series to capacitor 3. So as a result, we should add the capacitors C1 and C2 in parallel. So when we add them together in parallel, 10 microfarads plus 2.5 microfarads is 12.5 microfarads. Fine. Then this becomes a new equivalent capacitor, which if you wanted to, you could basically draw like so. You could draw B then you could draw a single capacitor which is C12 and then another capacitor which is C3. Okay, So we're going to add these in series to each other. So as a result we should uh, add them using the reciprocal rule. So 1 over the equivalent capacitance is 1 over C1 and 2 plus 1 over C3. So it's 1 over 12.5 plus 1 over 0 0.3. So at the end, to get the equivalent capacitance, after adding those, we have to reciprocate. So what we find is we find that 1 over 12.5 plus 1 over 0 0.3 reciprocated in our calculator is approximately 0.293 microfarads. Fine. This solves part A. Part B. Find the total charge stored on each capacitor if a 1.55 volt battery is connected to the combination. Okay, So we want to assume that the voltage difference between A and B as labeled on the diagram okay, here is 1.55 volts. So with that in mind, we say find the total charge stored on the full assembly first. So notice the reason we added those capacitors together as if they were a single capacitor is because we can find the total charge stored in the combination. So we can say the equivalent capacitance is equal to the total charge on the whole arrangement of capacitors divided by the total voltage difference, in this case of the battery. So we can rearrange that to find the total charge. The equivalent capacitance times the delta V of the battery is the total charge. That's 0 0.293 microfarads times 1.55 volts is 0 0.454 microcoulombs. By the way, for the remainder of this problem, we'll let volts just be in traditional SI units of volts. And we'll carry around the micro metric prefix for capacitances and for charges. So 0 0.454 approximately uh, microcoulombs. But notice that's the charge on capacitor 3. That must be the same as the charge on the capacitor 1-2 combination. Okay. Previously when I've mentioned this out loud in class I've said it wrong. So the charge on capacitor 3 is the same as the 1-2 combination charge. Also, do not use this equation, that Q total is equal to Q1 and 2 plus Q3. That's incorrect. It turns out that this charge, 0 0.454 microcoulombs, is on capacitor 3, and it's also on the C1-2 combination. Okay, So we can first deduce that uh, 0 0.454 4 is Q3. It's the charge on the third capacitor. Fine. But if we want to get Q12 separately, we have to know what the 
voltage is across each of those capacitors. Why is that? Because since the voltage across each of those devices will depend on each capacitor's capacitance, then we have to figure out how much charge is on each of those capacitors. In fact, another way to say this is capacitor 1 and 2 will share the charge of 0.454 microcoulombs unequally, depending upon the size of those capacitances. So we have to find the voltage drop across capacitor 3 and then use subtraction to find the total voltage drop from the battery to then figure out the voltage drop for each of those capacitors. So with that in mind, we perform the following. We say capacitor 3 is Q3 over delta V3. So let's rearrange that to get delta V3. So that's Q3 over C3. The micro prefix goes away. So 0.5 454 over 0.3 gives about 1.513 volts. Notice that's smaller than the voltage of the battery, which it better be because otherwise we made a mistake because we can't overuse the voltage that came from the battery. Then we can say delta V1 and delta V2 should be the same voltage drop across each capacitor, should be the voltage drop of the battery minus the voltage drop of capacitor 3, which is upstream, if you will, of capacitor 1 or 2. So if we subtract those voltages, we get 0 0.036 volts. Now notice, that's the same voltage across capacitor 1 and 2, but there will be different charges on each capacitor because they have different capacitances. So if we take these capacitor equations and rearrange them, we can multiply each capacitance times each voltage, get the charge on microcoulomb, in microcoulombs, but notice 0.36 microcoulombs and 0.09 microcoulombs should hopefully add to this 0.454 microcoulombs. The only reason it doesn't add precisely is because of some rounding errors. But note that the charge on capacitor 2 is exactly one quarter the charge on capacitor 1 because the capacitance of capacitor 2 is one quarter of the capacitance of capacitor 1 but they each have the same voltage across them. Okay finally what is the energy stored by each capacitor? Now since we know the charge, the capacitance, and the voltage drop on each capacitor we can use any version of the potential energy stored in a capacitor equations. So what I've decided to do for good practice is to show each version of the potential energy stored in a capacitor equations. So just for good measure I'm going to use Q squared over 2C for capacitor 1, 1 half Q delta V for capacitor 2, and 1 half C delta V squared for capacitor 3. So we have to put the subscripts of 1, and 2, and 3 in each of those capacitors respectively. We know the energy will be in joules. We put the numbers in from what we had before. okay? And then when we uh, calculate these out, we get our values. 6.48 times 10 to the minus 9th joules, 1.62 times 10 to the minus 9th joules, and 2.27 times 10 to the minus 9th joules. Okay? Notice that the capacitor with the largest capacitance, that was capacitor 1, 10 microfarads, okay, stores the most energy, which in general doesn't seem to be too surprising. Okay, that ends this problem. Thank you very much for your attention. Please like the video, uh, comment if you would like to, and I would love if you could subscribe to this channel. Thank you for your attention. I will see you in the next video.